literally went to the final round phenom only had a pixel of life left so it, this isn't some just i'm ready for the matchup i'm gonna dominate type of uh, winner's finals we're getting into i want to see if juicy joe can kind of implement the things that were successful in the set up against phenom and lord venom and if you can kind of figure out that one hurdle he would need to get past the favorite well uh i'm gonna apologize in advance to juicy joe because i'm about to expose him oh uh so well head-to-head -head records here when it comes to phenom and juicy joe and the world warriors for the cpt region 3-1 in the winner's final world warrior number two to phenom where he got a double perfect against oh, juicy joe wow we have 3-0 to phenom in the winner's final world mm -hmm. Warriors number three okay clean sweep we got 3-1 to phenom in the winner's final of world warrior number four mm -hmm. and then we have 3-1 in the grand finals of that exact same tournament so He's got a pretty clean and solid track record against Juicy Joe here. I'm pretty sure he consumes all the data he needs and has to find those necessary adjustments as well. And this is one of his closest training partners in this region uh, for Phenom Juicy Joe. But apologies for exposing you, but just giving the head-to-head -head record, you know. Hey, but to me, that means Juicy Joe is due. He's due for a tournament victory over True. Phenom. And honestly, it just seems like it plays out this way so often where when someone has the advantage against another player, it's always in these more local settings, right? Where yes. it's like a World Warrior event or your local or your various smaller type bracket. They just always seem to be owning them. And then when we get to a major, a premiere, it just goes the other way. So the Juicy Joe is at least hoping for that here in Winners Finals. Well, let's see what he's capable of here. Juicy Joe. Actually, get a, had a good season thus far, traveling offline, being consistent in the online circuit as well. But again, this is a make or break here. But only will get half the job done. Already establishing that control. Phenom looks like he's going to take a very similar approach to what he did with Lord Venom. The conversions may be similar. The approach is what's going to be different between Juicy Joe and Lord Venom because I promise you Ooh. there's a clear distinction between the two. Yeah, I believe we have a connection issue at the moment. Maybe a hiccup here and there because we saw Phenom spam the jabs. That's usually an indication of some type of internet flub. So I think they're trying to get that settled down right now as we start the set. Because, of course, we want to maintain as much integrity and stable connectivity -ness as possible for this winner's finals. Of course. But yes, these guys are going to be getting things, resuming things, I should say, very shortly. Make sure you tweet out the stream, twitch.tv forward slash catcom fighters. Heck, maybe have it on one of your seven monitors you have in your room. Because I know there's tons <laughs> of SF6 happening, uh, action happening over the course of yeah. this weekend alone. And like we said, we're getting to the tail end of the business end of the season here. Like you said, this can be very nerve wracking yeah, for, for any player here. Some people prepare for the one big tournament. Other guys like to use the World Warriors as that consistency builder. So they have the confidence here. But sometimes you don't want to get too comfortable in your own region. Because uh, if you're living in the house with four other people, guess what? They might know your, <laughs> your bad habits yeah. just as much as you know this. <laughs> Absolutely. And I got to imagine that the four remaining players all know each other very well, right? The yep. four remaining players were our top four winner side of top eight, right? All of these players are very strong in the region right now. They're very consistent. Phenom, Juicy Joe, Mirkin, and Lord Venom down there in the losers. These are the, the creme de la creme, so to speak, of this region right now. Even with some of the players that we were expecting to get farther, like the Rickamans Barnets and the Shady Imposters falling short, these guys have proved that their consistency is at the upper echelon in the region, right? So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And Phenom, it, it was so close up against Lord Venom, man. And Juicy Joe and Mirkin also went to a final game, right? So all of these guys, it's really whoever is on in these sets going forward is going to win. I don't have any favorites either way well either way they're put on a performance and they're living up to the community's expectation top three characters in the top four yeah shouts to big bird he made a tweet earlier and he said the canon uh, the canon luke players is arguing about who's second and third and <laughs> jp is up there at the top because you're just not going to trifle with that man we, nah, we already know what's cool up do you know, cool do you know the ones where you know the ones where the the third guy wants to get involved in the arguments yeah, like no yeah. let, let us peons <laughs> Like, let us argue here. You're over there. Like, exactly. You know, we just deal yeah. with it accordingly. JP's just in the back on the beach with the paraphernalia watching Ken and Luke fight each other. Yeah, definitely. Definitely that type of image for sure. Oh, um, but the thing that's interesting to me is that yesterday you said Guile's in your top three, right? In my top three, yes. So who's not out of JP, Ken, and Luke? I would push Luke out. That's me. <laughs> sorry. That's me personally. I was hoping that you were gonna. I was gonna like cover you in the flame suit, and you're gonna be like, nah. "I'm pushing Ken out." Nah, and I was like, nah, 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 nah. 
Mm, you know what? I'll, my I man will, jammers with the Dow play. But I no. I will stick by I will stick by my guns. I think it's uh, JP, Ken, and Guile. Okay. Luke is there, but it's like I don't want to say, oh, here's my top three. Then everyone else changes the top three and says Luke's there. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> crouch. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's not free. Like, well, that's but, right. That's right. Literally, they'll go, but four days ago, you said, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things yeah. happen overnight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to get with the times. Man. Why are you bringing up old stuff, right? <laughs> Why are you bringing up old stuff for? That's just me personally. But again, I think someone did make a fair point of we should probably just talk about top tier instead of top three, top So five. that's how I that's how I feel. Is that because I feel like the, the top is tier of the game and then like the tier right below them, the strength of these characters is not that different to me. Mm. Like I feel like so many characters in this game are strong. When I think of JP and Ken, I'm like, Guile, Cammy, Chun-Li, all these other characters that to me are up there with them. And it's just like a few other characters that I think are right below them in strength, like a DJ, right? And maybe DJ's up there with them now as well. But yeah, I just feel like instead of arguing about this top three nonsense, I don't really want to hear about tiers in general, to be honest with you anymore. Like there's just- Content. A, exactly. The YouTube ads? Exactly, it is. It I is. I need the money. And I understand that aspect <laughs> of it, right? Like the content creation, it, you know, it brings in the views, the impressions and all the that. engagement. I understand. I understand why we get it done. But like specifically on commentary, I'm oh, pretty I'm pretty sick of the conversation. Like straight up. I'll just be <laughs> honest about it. Like there's so many strong characters. We've seen so many characters win tournaments with this game. We've seen the Lilies win tournaments with this game. We've seen Zangief True. win tournaments with this game, right? It's just I would rather get into the nuances of the matchups of like trying not to downplay the characters either because I think so many of the characters in this game are strong. See, do you know what? See, what's crazy for me, right? Because sometimes one of my favorite things about studying matchups, especially matchups with the top tier characters, is is just looking at the very subtle interactions, right? Look out for this one and then follow this scenario. Here's yeah. how they punish this. I do feel the system has thrown some of that out of the window because sure. of how it works. Now, I'll give an example, right? Because we saw Luke versus JP before. I was studying this before and I was I was actually kind of annoyed that it didn't work. So JP's stand media punch is six, minus six on block. Okay. Luke's level one is six frames. Mm -hmm. I done JP's stand media punch right in Luke's face and got the CPU to do level one. It didn't punish it. And I was mm. like, this just doesn't logically make any sense. Mm -hmm. and obviously, I put a video out with Aki trying to punish Manon's overhead. Then Broski obviously quote tweeted it. So I said, look, sometimes the numbers don't do what they say on the tin. Yeah. And it's like there's different factors. When does the hurt block actually become active? Yes. You know, the pushback on mm -hmm. the moves and whatnot. So I do feel sometimes in regards the system kind of goes against what we have traditionally knew for years. So something for is sure. minus six, we try to punish it with a six frame move and it's relatively in uh, the realms of possibility. Yeah. The same thing when you try to use Cammy's level one, level three to punish certain things and it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and doesn't it's like, quite okay, reach. Yeah, yeah. All right, but I, I guess there's more, um, there's more emphasis on utilizing the system to try and punish things. And of course, using parry to then yes. punish certain things as well. And then there's that as well. I was looking at Guile. I was like, there's a there's a perfect parry uh, perfect parry punish he gets triple P's right, crazy. <laughs> it's not even the five P's. He gets a perfect parry punish into stand fist, gal high kick and flash kick. That's a sixteen hundred damage. That's scaled, Ooh. and that's still pretty pretty beefy. Yeah, absolutely. and I'm like, yo, when people start optimizing their perfect parry punishes mm -hmm. on guys like JP, mm -hmm. on guys like Ken. It's like you're in for a different ball game, dude. Right? There, there's still so much to crack open with this game, 100, percent and like there's still so many more situations to optimize in. And you know, we did talk about how so the system mechanics of the game might take away from the nuances of like having yeah. you need to have this answer specifically 100%. with your character because the system kind of makes up for that, right? But because of the way the system works, I really love the way it still affects player decision making even beyond True. that, right? Sure, like you won't have like a character specific answer, but I still like to see that it kind of encourages players to have certain type of answers. Yeah. And, and like we saw earlier, right? I think it was a Lord Venom match or it was Juicy Joe perhaps and Mirkin where Juicy Joe had put himself in burnout and then Mirkin or one of these other players ended up like swinging for a drive impact mid screen. He jumped out of it and punishes the drive impact to end the set, right? And I just love the fact that even when you're in burnout, you're supposed to be at the deficit of the situation with the drive meter, it makes the opponent a little bit more predictable, yeah. right? You have to be careful about the one being at advantage to not get too linear about your decisions. So I, to me, that's always been such a brilliant mechanic since this game launched because I'm like, bruh, even the person at the deficit, like it's still, when you're on offense, it still gives you more to think about and it still can trip you up even when you quote unquote have the advantage. Uh, well, it just begs the question is, in various scenarios in Street Fighter 6, who really has the advantage? Exactly. Sometimes it's better to have little health and maximum drive gauge than maximum health and no drive gauge. And does anybody have advantage when parry exists? You know what I mean? Like we could we could get real philosophical. Me and Jamers could be sitting here for like six, seven hours. <laughs> 
<laughs> talking about all kinds of different things. You don't want that. Y'all want the match to get started. Trust me. Oh, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, with the, and specifically with the parry, like I just think there's so much more we're gonna continue to see with it. Like I still feel like we're starting to see a little bit more and more now where people are parrying the light block strings, right? Because yes, people are huge. Yeah. Light block string meta in this game is so important. The lights are minus in this game, so you can't do like Street Fighter V where you're doing like a plus jab into mm -hmm. a frame trap or something like that. To frame trap with your jabs, you have to chain them. So the gap between them is little enough to where if the opponent presses the button, they get counter hit. To counter that, you could do things like parry because you know they're chaining the jab. Well, this is the thing, because some of the players have some of the players have lamented, some people advocate for it. It's one of those things where it, it really depends on the recovery of the jab because if you're allowed to get heavy, heavy is where you get most of the mileage from in terms of your punishes anyway, like the Igal example. Oh, I see, well. I see what you're saying, yes. But then, if you get have a medium, but your medium leads into a target combo, that's also a good shout as well. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, one of the things people should really be uh, fixated on in general is either when you get perfect parry, positional advantage, or you're fixated on attacking the drive, mm -hmm. as I would like to say. But, and speaking of the devil, these guys will be attacking each other's drive gauge respectively. We're back into the set here. So let's get it. Venom versus Juicy Joe. So again, this is winner's finals of our CPT North Europe and East Europe event. We got Phenom and Juicy Joe. Phenom was able to take down Lord Venom's JP. Three to two in the previous set. Juicy Joe able to thwart Mirkin to get in this position. All right, that's negative three. Try to burn him out there. I thought he was going to cancel into his uh, EX Phantom to try and burn him out, but he's still an opportunity. And I think Phenom was expecting that as well. That's why he went with the jump. Juicy Joe just showed a lot of patience right there. Again, oh, the damage. Percent build that meter. He's almost got Lavushka ready and available, but I don't think he's going to utilize it as much as Lord Venom did, but we straight in the corner here. Yeah, Colin reaching with that crotch medium kick that has a go-to JP bud. Yeah, big damage coming through. Yeah, I caught him committing to the stand fierce right there. He's not going to be able to recover in time. Not get punished. Not too much of a huge punish there. Not the one I was expecting. But again, the, the frame that de uh, depends on what you do, whether it's a throw, a button, and yeah. the active frames, and there's all logistics involved in that stuff. Oh, and then there's the drive rush tick throw, a favorite of Street Fighter Six. Again, just taking that calm and exercising that patience to get the approach. Yeah, drive rush and stop. He pulled the brakes. Yeah, Phenom. I think he was expecting... Punish! That's clean. Oh, he didn't have level three in time. Yeah. Keeping it in his pocket for now, but that could work out if Phenom can still clutch out this round. He'll be locked and loaded for round three. But he's got to get past JP first. You see Joe just walking him down. He might activate early. No. I thought he was going to activate the level two, but he's got to be careful. Run Ooh. level three could be a thing. Oh! And that might be, no, okay, it's not too high. This is the CA version as well. So he's in burnout, Bro. he's gonna replenish. So he might be able to do an EX departure setup here. I'm not sure if he's gonna risk that. Is he close oh enough? My. No, he can. It doesn't matter. He oh, goes yeah. for level three to avoid the chip. Juicy Joe takes the first game. Once upon a time, this was about 2017 or 2018. Phenom saw me playing someone and he saw me in a dangerous scenario. He said, sometimes you just got to pick how you lose. Sometimes <laughs> you just got to pick. That was definitely one of those moments. Yeah, he, picked, oh, he, he picked. He picked. Is he dry rush, tick throw, jumped out of? That's good news for Juicy Joe. Even if he eats a DP, I maybe would have liked to see Phenom do the crouch fears into run cancel that Kens are starting to do now to keep the opponent in the corner. Might have not been uh, the right timing for that, though. And there's a throw. Got up in the corner here. Oh. Hail Mary stand fierce. And he didn't get his cancel, unfortunately, there into the Phantom. Might have input it too early. That's sort what of it looked like. JP just staying in still. I do see a couple of JP players having that uh, problem. They might input the ghost too early. Ooh. Repairs as well. Does interrupt right there. Remember, yeah, Phenom is in uh, burnout. So extra four frames to everything he blocks. Departure. Close to the gap. Trying to go and check as much chip as possible. Right, you know, he's got his drive meter back now. Me using off a drive rush cancel. Tries for another tick throw. He just forces his way out of this dangerous spot. Oh! What a weak punish. Phenom is highly aware of that move. And you see right there, he tried to take his turn after the third light. He canceled in a fireball. Caught Juicy Joe trying to press. Archer again. Let's see if he builds the meter in time for level two. He can turn this around here. But Phenom happily just going to walk back with the forward. Use the parry when need be. Mm -hmm. Not trying to let his drive gauge get bullied for free. See something to come out. Fireball stops it in progress. All times fireball there from Phenom again. I like the JP players don't really jump at certain intervals in the match, but Dragon Lash in. Oh, he tried to get around that crouch medium punch with the Dragon Lash too. And then Juicy Joe again. It's been all crouch medium punch this round. 
There you go, drop rush is in. Trade, oh, and he's gonna get the combo. conversion as well. Will he spend the level three? He's gonna burn himself out. Yes. He does so. He's like, yeah, bro, I'm not gonna give Ken an opportunity while I'm grayed out to get his offense going. Let's go to the next round. Sensational conversion there into the interdiction. Take it to the final round here of this game too. A huge deficit in terms of super art meter, but hey, all this man needs is drive gauge. Man, he Something can, will happen. Oh, I was gonna say, he can build the two bars as well. Phenom holding on to his level three and That's ends up huge. going for the throw. That is a dangerous choice here. Oh, he missed time to scribe off there, unfortunately. Oh, and yeah. the drive rush beat his tank fist. Yeah. This is huge here for Phenom. Can they get the level three? If he runs in here, what's the risk is Juicy Yo going to take? That's the question. Oh, he tries to crouch via punch. Phenom spacing it out perfectly right there. Can't get the kill here, nor the throw. Still has complete control, though. There you have it. Baits him into trying to throw, gets the shimmy, and makes it one apiece here in this set. Looking good between the two right now, again. When Ken has JP trapped in the corner, the options are limited. They're scary options, but they're still limited because the, the corners are at your worst. Yeah, I mean, Crush Me and Punches from JP have been plaguing him, and it continues to do so right there. So I love the way he outspaced it with the stand heavy kick at the end of the last round. Yeah, it's a utilization of stand roundhouse here in terms of punishing, uh, especially that uh, down forward heavy punch sweep against uh, JP has actually been pretty phenomenal thus far. Yeah, you go with punish. Ooh, with the butt is a huge reward. Oh, he's about to get okay from that as well, but because he's near the corner, gets the triple flash kicks. <laughs> yeah, medium kick target combo right there. This is a really great tool. Oh, oh yeah, the crouch jab into the stand medium punch from Ken off of dry rush, does catch jumps and back dashes. Great frame trap for that situation. Just waiting here is Juicy Joe. Colossal life lead here for Phenom at the moment. And then just throwing out the fences. Gotta be careful, man, because Phenom's looking for a way in to close out his round. Indeed, no Dragon Lash is being represented. We saw it once here. Phenom just slowly inching him towards the corner. Another great tick throw tech, though. Departure, just gonna let it rock. Yeah, we're looking to burn him out before we actually go in here. And there's the burnout. And he does have it. He wants that level two as well. Making him block, he's very close to it. He's got it now. OD departure window is up, wants to get closer to activate. Here it comes. And he's got to hold this as well, because he can't level two either. Yes. Oh, Big the damage low. coming through. Let me get that. Oh, he tried to reset him. Great block from Phenom. Drive reversal. Immediate perfect parry, though. I think that's it. He he's didn't build to level one. He's got to spend everything. Yeah, cash it oh, out. Oh, the stand fierce does enough, even with the scaling. Damn, nice choice. Incredible patience there from Juicy Joe as well. Tried to do an early jump fist, didn't quite work out. There's the amnesia. Where's the mix-up? No mix-up. Yeah, just, uh, walked up to him, went low. Phenom blocking it out. Like the meeting kick being annoying with that. Oh. Yes, and listen, you can't take your turn in the traditional manner anymore. Yeah, exactly. Especially against the JP players. Once you block that crouch medium kick, they love parrying after. And he's going to go into level three here. Lovely stuff because he did capitalize on it with crouching fist there from Juicy Joe and Phenom. Let's see, just walk forward and crouch on that space to preserve some drive gauge. There it is. You got to spin that level three to get your drive meter back. He had a sliver of it left. And a hit conversion. There's a level two there as well. He needs to find a hit here because Juicy Joe. Drive rushes in at the DI. Nice parry. Well, he's got the necessary uh, drive gauge to work with here, Phoenix. To close out this round. Clean jump. There's a Lavushka. Oh is he going to go for the drive gauge? It looks like he's going to go for it. Reset? Yeah, he's going to consume the drive gauge. Yeah, oh, no. doesn't even. He just goes for a setup. Oki blocks, but it's still not your turn. Phenom tries oh! to press. Reset with the command grab in the middle of the combo to take a lead. Closes it out with Embrace. I think that's wow. the first time he's actually done that in this set thus far. And you got to know, that thing is like 26 frames. Quite the exact same startup. Tantamount startup to DI. Yeah. He done it in his face. And he did DI literally earlier. Oh, is that man. Okay, gotcha. And trust me, I usually see people, uh, shout out to Broski. I, I never really see Broski land that come on grab the tournament. <laughs> but um, it looks like everybody else does, apparently. But they did it right in his face. And again, he done that extravagant sequence. Yeah. He showed the whole dance. He done the whole choreography steps, everything. Choreographed steps, everything. I, I remember Nemo was playing a JP mirror against somebody and he tried command grab, like a, a command grab gimmicky joint like that. And they jumped out of it and he lost the set for it. And they were like, justification from the command grab gods. <laughs> they were like, you want to talk mess about grab grab characters? You ain't winning with that joint, that's for sure. Yeah. 
Oh, he just oh, he dry, his face and then does amnesia. What? Dry brush amnesia from Juicy Joe now. Oh, no. What are you on today? He is making Phenom uncomfortable, bro. When you can make decisions like this and they work out, it just starts uh, mentally snowballing oh, against your opponent. Give me that. And then another one. And oh, the face. He's too far. Dodging it, but he is feeling it right now. Phenom trying to stem the bleeding here. Oh, good oh, stuff. Oh, and this is a big way to do it. Pulled the brakes. Is he going to start it early, though? We've got to threaten him now. No respect. He did the wake up jab into Strybog, and Juicy wow. Joe finds himself on set point here in winner's final. Indeed, Phenom, a titan of the scene. That's who our player interview was with, right? The most notable player out of this region right now could be going to the loser's bracket soon. Sad face, throwing it out there, abusing the Phantoms here, but then slows it down. And with that next methodical approach until he throws out Bylina again. So good, man. He uses that move so sparingly, the long distance sweep from JP. It's so tough to catch on when he's going to. Similar to Lord Venom as well. Yeah. Next up here. Yeah, pressure being applied. He can he can attack the drive gauge here if he wants to get a level two here. Oh, oh too early. He's trying to set up shop right there. Phenom, inch it forward, gets the crotch medium kick. Level two as well. Puts him very low on the drive meter. Back dash. That was a bad choice there. Just waits for the delay. If he gets close enough, finds the connection. Sweep. Here we go. He's going to hold this. Oh, man. He's going to jump over, put him towards the corner. Yes, sir. Mm. And there's the local conversion. Can he get a sneaky stun? He wants it. You knew he was coming for it. That drive meter was almost refilled from Phenom, but he had no option. Oh, he's His level on one he's wasn't going there it. He's yet. going for it. Oh, just oh, the pressure. Oh away. Yeah, he doesn't want to get drive impacted. Now his back's towards the corner. Match level one. He's, He's jumping. He's been on waiting till he lands and then gets there with the drive impact. Oh, man. Listen, one thing I've noticed in this region is it is incredibly difficult to close out rounds against Phenom. We saw at a perfect example there is the paragon of efficiency about to drop into the losers. Who knows? There's a sweep. Amnesia again. When you're behind, that's the type of W you need. That's a momentum swinging win from Phenom. Needs to close out this round and right into game five. Juicy Joe trying to slow down the tempo, get his composure back. Ooh, I like that. Straight raw. That was a bit random, but I like it. The Gordon Ramsay swipe. All right, there we go. Gets the throw. It was a counter hit, so he's not going to get the extra damage because it only applies on punish counter. Indeed. Dry oh. rush, getting impatient. He's getting impatient now. He knows it as well. Faints the ghost. There's a DI pushing him to the corner. Why Juicy Joe again? He's spending so much drive meter trying to start this offense against Phenom. I think one way to burn him out is if he catches a regular fireball with the level three, but he's burnt out here, so his options are limited here, Ringe. Indeed. Juicy Joe, but he's going to be fine with how slow this is going right now because he's got to refill some drive meter. Dragon Lash has plus. Throw. He's not looking too good. He needs to sneak in another throw here. Oh, he does get the jump out. He eats a DP for it, but that's okay. He eats the more plus frames. What a tick throw tech again. Ooh. Oh, that was so close to being disastrous. Very well. He avoided that word, and it could be beneficial for Juicy Joe. Let's find out. 25 seconds on the clock here. That was so fortunate, that timing, because he actually traded with a driving pack. You don't see that often. No. 20 seconds on the clock, chasing him down here. Fino will more than happily wait here. He's going to wait. Yeah, Juicy Joe, he's got to make something happen here. Tries to sneak in the overhead. If he combos into level three, the timer freezes. He it needs does. to find the way. Oh, he's going to use level two instead. You got to get a reset going. Gets the overhead. Oh, this is Goes huge. low He's going to do the whole thing. He has to do the maximum combo. Oh, reset. he gets the reset. And he runs away. And he's going to run. DP is not enough damage. Juicy Joe takes the winner's finals. Woo, Juicy Joe. Drew that tournament win, as Rin said at the start oh of this, 3-1, and puts himself in pole position in the grand finals there. I actually thought Phenom was going to do dry rushes to level three. Yeah. And that would have just held it, it in one second. Oh. Time freeze and everything. But Juicy Joe, all juiced up. All juiced up. Oh, man. What decision making will play from both sides right there. Juicy Joe. I mean, that's the thing if you're Phenom, right? So many things are running through your head in that instance because you know the timer is ticking down. If he just goes with a full extended combo from JP like that, the damage is going to be a little bit too close for comfort. So he wants to put the reset in. He gets it. Man, Phenom almost chased him down. As you said, if you let the level three rip at the end after that instead of the DP, then we're talking different. But, oh. It, it could have been an execution error. He could have done that intentionally, try to get yeah. the cancellation so the short yeah. you can into the non-cinematic level three, but it's all hypothetical now at this point but lovely oh, again man. back and forth between the two players again this is not easy for phenom and 
what this means is as well i like how stubborn juicy joe was with his meter right he wasn't afraid to burn himself out and then when need be he'd find a way to convert into level two through hell Yo. rain or snow and then had the audacity to get that command grab. i think that's the only command grab of the set here that's the only one i remember for sure yeah, but uh, as you mentioned, bro, he'll he'll walk uphill both ways as long as it means level two is coming out. You know what I mean? And that is really what we saw from Juicy Joe up against Mirkin as well. He was always just leaning on that level two. It gives uh, JP uh, such an advantage in uh, the next sequence that he has been able to make the most out of it again and again. That's right. Now that Phenom's in the losers. Oh, yeah, bro. The run back for Lord Venom oh, yeah, could bro. happen a lot sooner than he anticipated. However... Do not count out Mirkin because Mirkin